dive lights. Divers use them to peek underneath ledges, hunt for nudibranchs, and shed some light on their night dives. But when is a dive light more than just something to illuminate your surroundings underwater? When you need it to survive. First things first, Orca Torch sent me the D710 for review, although I'm under no obligation to provide a positive review, I just wanted to make that clear that it was sent to me. However, if you decide that you're interested in this light, please use the link in the pinned comment below because that will tell Orca Torch that they should send me more lights to review in the future which would be awesome. I'd really appreciate it. And if you like the video, leave a like below. It's more helpful than you probably even realize. If you're a cave diver or a wreck diver, then you already know how important backup lights can be. And for the advanced diver, that's where I think the D710 sits. It's like a really solid backup light, especially because it's just about as bright as most primaries out there today. It's also great if you just need a smaller light to poke around things when a dive light isn't necessary to your survival, but it's nice to have. However, if you're just starting out or you're a career recreational diver, this is a perfect primary dive light, especially when you consider the fact that if you do decide to move on to more advanced diving later, this light will shift into a backup light role perfectly. It used to be when you switched from your primary to a backup light back in the day, you were sacrificing a lot of brightness and runtime. You're still sacrificing runtime. You can't get around the fact that we just don't have the battery technology to make these super bright lights last a long time on these small batteries. You still need a huge battery. But if the idea is for the light to just get you out of the cave or the wreck, it doesn't need to burn as long, right? So having a light that's as bright as your primary when you have to switch to make it back out. Because if you're in a situation like that, do you really want to be switching to a light that's way dimmer? It's really nice to be able to switch to a backup light with 3000 lumens. This thing is bright. I still remember doing night dives 12, 13 years ago with 250 lumen in Tova lights and we were stoked to have them. So let's take a look at it. I don't often actually film the unboxing for my review videos. So if this is something that you'd like to see more of in the future, or if you don't care, let me know in the comments. These days, you don't find yourself shopping for dive gear in an actual store all that often anymore. First impressions really used to matter. You'd pick up a piece of dive gear and judge its quality based on the overall feel and fit and finish of the light before you'd actually take it home and try it out on a dive. Does it look well designed? Does it feel tough? And quite frankly, does it look badass? To be fair, when I'm diving, I couldn't care less about how my light looks. If it's not bright enough, or the runtime isn't long enough, or it's constantly dying on me, doesn't matter if it looks cool. But a good appearance does show a certain amount of respect for your customer. It's like showing up to an interview in a suit. That might not get you the job on its own, but it's a step in the right direction. The Orca Torch D710 showed up dressed to the nines, and I do have to say, I like the orange ring. Because in a market saturated with cheap dive lights that aren't all that dissimilar from each other, it's good to stand out. Orca Torch sends out a lot of lights for review. It definitely seems like they're willing to take the Pepsi challenge against all these other dive lights, and I like that. As far as specs go, the max output is 3000 lumens, which like I've already said, is seriously bright. The kit comes with two batteries, which is awesome. And the batteries can actually be charged by inserting a USB-C cable into the battery itself. So you don't have to carry around an extra charger. You can charge your light with your phone charger, which is just awesome for recreational divers that don't want to be carrying around all this extra junk, or even technical divers for that matter. We already have so much to keep track of. It has a six degree beam angle, which means the light is nice and tight 
which is what you want for murky water so you can punch through all that particulate and bad visibility and see a little bit further. Although it's not going to be a great light to light up your video, you'd want a floodlight for that purpose, but it's not made for that. It's pretty easy to use, just a single titanium button, which is cool, love titanium, that you just keep pressing to cycle through the different brightnesses. It's fairly simple stuff. You can lock the light to make sure you don't accidentally turn it on. And it also has uh, overheating protection to make sure that you don't, you know, screw up your light. For those of you that don't know, it's not a great idea to use lights that were intended to be used underwater on land for any extended period of time. They can get seriously hot because they're counting on the water to cool the light when it's being used. It's depth rated to 150 meters, which is great. Most people don't go beyond 100 meters because that's basically the max that any dive training organization trains to. But there are divers going deeper than that. So the fact that this is an option for them is great. It's made out of aluminum and it's got a nice tough anodized finish that looks great. And it comes with a pretty nice carrying case to keep it all in. My experience with the light so far has been pretty good. Like I said before, it's crazy bright, like set shit on fire bright. So it's important to not store this light or any other light in an upright position where it can be on without you realizing it, because it will set something on fire if you leave it like that long enough. But that's the same with every bright light. The light really punches through the darkness, and I gotta say I was really impressed with the performance during the day. Normally you turn on a dive light during the day and you almost can't tell where you're pointing it because there's so much sunlight drowning it out. I could absolutely see this light on the reef during the day. It is super duper bright. The form factor is good. It stores easily on my shoulder strap, hanging from the D-ring with a little rubber band to keep it in place. You can basically forget that it's even there and then when you need it, it's there and good to go. My only real critique for this light is that it still uses a green red indicator light like just about every other light out there. But the big problem with that for me is that I'm colorblind and I can't tell the difference between green or red lights. And uh, it would just be so easy to make it blue and red or green and blue, whatever you want. Just throw blue in there in another color and most colorblind people are gonna be able to differentiate between those very easily. It's just really annoying that the information that I could clean from that light is just completely useless because I can't tell if it's green or red. Although the red light does blink at 10%. Batteries, like I said, the batteries are really interesting because they have the USB-C port directly on the side of it. And I think that's just so cool. I think that's a really great way to handle that. You've got two batteries, so you can always be swapping them out. You can have one charging while you're using the other one. Although this has a, more than enough time to get me through a two tank charter and I can see everything that I want to see under ledges and stuff like that. The turbo mode actually lights up like my entire studio. And there's four different brightnesses. So you've got turbo at 3000 lumens, which is, like I said, almost, it might be too bright. And then at high, you've got 1700 lumens and an hour and 40 minutes of runtime, which is more than enough for an entire night dive. That's great. If you need more time, you can run it at 800 lumens for three hours and 40 minutes. And on the low setting at 400 lumens, and like I said, back in the day, we were using 250 lumen lights. This is still brighter than that you can get a whopping seven hours and 40 minutes off of this light. That is ridiculous for a light this size. My first canister light for cave diving was 600 lumens. It was a light monkey and the battery went for six hours. This is only 200 lumens less and lasts longer. This basically could have been my cave diving light back in the day. That being said, I'd still go for something brighter these days as my primary. Hopefully we're going to get a chance to take a look at the Orca Torch canister light in the future, but we'll see. I still remember selling high-end 1200 lumen dive lights for $700 back in the day. And for $150, you get two batteries, the light, and it's twice as bright. It's amazing. It is really an interesting time for LED dive lights. So to sum up, if you're looking for your first dive light, 
I would definitely recommend this light. It can grow with you and that's awesome. And if you want a backup light that is just really bright, I can also wholeheartedly recommend the Orca Torch D710. So don't forget to use the link in the pinned comment below. I'd like to take a quick second to say thank you to Dive Vibe sponsors on Patreon. I couldn't make videos like this without you. This video, while I was sent the light, was not sponsored by Orca Torch in any way. So my patrons definitely help out with that. Thanks guys, it means a lot to me. If you'd like to support Dive Vibe and get access to some exclusive content, then follow the link to Patreon in the description below. Thanks for diving with me today, and I'll see you in the water.